Okay, we need to talk about this. Sony, no doubt about it, has a commanding lead over Xbox right now. Why is that? What are they doing that's so smart? Let's get into it. So like it or not, there is no denying that the PlayStation 5 is outselling the Xbox Series X two to one, regardless of how Xbox's strategy sizes up against PlayStation. PlayStation is having a killer 2021 and console launch to the point that they are doing better than they have ever done in their history. It's no small feat to talk about how well they're doing. So I want to talk about their commanding lead over Xbox right now and what that looks like, because they just put out this presentation. Uh, you can check out the whole thing online. I'll leave the link in the description. And it talks about some key things that they're just crushing at. So basically, from my notes, their operating income has been in the green and growing since 2014. And obviously, 2020 was their biggest year yet, with 2021 on track to be their biggest year ever. They have their biggest launch year sales ever, and that's with a shortage. So that's just a, a small thing that you should be considering that. This is PlayStations, and we're coming off the PlayStation 4 console lifecycle, right? So not only did they talk about how they have the tail of the PlayStation 4 era to back them, which is astronomical, they are also kicking butt selling more consoles in the first quarters for the PlayStation 5 versus the PlayStation 4. Play, the PlayStation 5 era for Sony is going to be bonkers good. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, but it, it's going to be tremendously good. Uh, continuing, 10% of their revenue is from emerging markets. And what that means is it means not the United States, not the EU, and not Japan. It means other places like uh, China, Australia, places that aren't considered in those territories. So 10% of their revenue is now from those markets. And that's a massive increase. If you look at the previous years, they are growing at an amazingly quick rate. And honestly, this presentation, I've been saying for a long time that <laughs> I think Xbox is going to catch up. But when you start looking at the numbers and you see how quiet Xbox has been, it honestly makes me pretty nervous. Maybe my hypothesis of that fake graph that I keep making, maybe it's not going to work out quite that well. Xbox is still going to do billions of dollars in revenue and just fine. They're going to have killer exclusives and everything. But I don't know, man. Sony is like on fire right now when you look at their their presentation and there's not a lot of holes to poke in this they're just doing fantastic i could talk about how yeah their games are 70 dollars, so of course their uh, uh software revenue is going to be high right but if pe people don't seem to care nobody seems to care you're still gonna buy ratchet you're still gonna if you're interested enough you're still gonna play returnal it's it's working for them so that 70 dollars thing that we all don't like it's it's like the video I made in 2015 where I said, vote with your wallet, and then everybody bought microtransactions. Well, guess what? That accounts for like 90% of some companies' revenues right now, digital sales. So anyway, let's continue talking about why Sony is kicking butt right now. So next month, <laughs> their consoles are going to start selling at a profit. So that means the cost to manufacture them is going to go down, and they're going to be in the green for console sales. That's huge. I, I couldn't believe that when I saw that, that they're already going to be in the green for console sales. Xbox, you have to start talking about your numbers. If you're having successes and like you just had this merger, you need to start talking about whether or not Bethesda is going to be exclusive. You need to come out and say that. And because <laughs> like there's not a ton of ammunition to, to go in here against these these sort of very clear successes that Sony is having. and I, I just want to hear your rebuttal, basically, um, because th this is great. Uh, okay, so next month, they're going to start selling their consoles with a profit. Exclusive software and content is essential to PlayStation 5 success. And I'll talk about a little bit later how those 
software exclusives. Again, Xbox, you need to say Bethesda's exclusive. I made this video about this. Bethesda needs to be Xbox exclusive. It rounds out their library to compete with what Sony is building and has built. Sony has a head start in the exclusive market. That is where Xbox has to catch up. And it's essential to their business model. So continuing, they had possibly their best launch lineup I have ever seen on a console. Games like Demon Souls, um, Spider-Man, Sackboy, Ratchet and Clank. Like, okay, you can laugh about Sackboy all you want, but guess what? Families play that game. That speaks to a very specific demographic of people. My wife played Sackboy and loved it, for example. You have Astro's Playroom. That's a game that somebody like my wife, my wife's not into violence or anything like that. She's very, um, um, like, not a gamer, right? But being able to sit down with your family and play stuff like that, that's good for business. Um, uh, and they're they're correctly saying they had their best launch lineup. Look at the PS4 launch lineup. It was like that sort of that kill zone game and a bunch of eh stuff, if I could put it put it lightly. And then this year, yeah, I'll give you kudos. Returnal, Ratchet, everything that you got coming down the line. The, the PS5 launch year is awesome. Really, really solid stuff. Uh, 80% of their revenue is coming from software and services, and they have peripherals on there too, I believe. So 80% is from subscriptions, PlayStation Now, game sales, and they invested heavily <clears throat> into that uh, recently uh, based on their earnings call. So keep that in mind. They think that 2021 is going to be their strongest year ever. And then in 2022, they think they're going to beat it. That, this is from Jim Ryan. This is Jim Ryan's presentation. And the fact that, like, that's a business guy, right? We all tease him and whatever, but apparently people don't care about $70 games, $70 games. And apparently his strategies are working for better or for worse, right? So 2021 is going to be the strongest year ever. And then 2022, they're going to beat that. Uh, Free-to-play is going to be a key driver of PlayStation Store consumer spend, which is now 25% of total PlayStation Store revenue. I believe that's a quote from Daniel Ahmad. Some of this stuff is from Daniel Ahmad, so I'm going to credit him now. I'll just link to the thread in the description because I, I took all these notes at once while reading the presentation and cross-referencing with what he had tweeted. He is an analyst who's, who's really, really smart and able to dive into this in a way that sort of gets my brain going. <laughs> right um so notable new growth factors include more games coming to pc sorry sony fans that's just smart business and it expands the the reach of where those sony games can hit they do it in a really smart way they actually wait longer for those games to hit and i think that's a really really good way to do it um they're going to explain the playstation ip to mobile uh, that has been hinted for a while. Still no news on what is that going to look like. Is it going to be gimmicky or is it going to be smart? I think it will be smart. I don't think they're going to be making gimmicky stuff. That would be foolish. And it would just set them up for, for negative press right from the beginning, right? They're going to develop live service titles on console. Think Destiny. Think Outriders. I think that is really smart. They're going to expand access accessibility via cloud gaming also. By the way, PlayStation Now is up to 3.2 million subs. Now, I know that uh, pales in comparison. Game Pass has a huge install base of people subscribed there. But Sony is looking to expand beyond just the console. Their growth areas that they outline in this presentation are PlayStation Studios, including new studios from people like Project Haven. That's the Jade Raymond studio where they're making new IP. Firewalk, which is making an original multiplayer game, cloud, mobile, and PSVR on PlayStation 5. Then beyond that, there's also PlayStation movies, movie services, things like Funimation, and TV shows. They're just building out this powerhouse of content that definitely makes me go, whoa, Xbox, you gotta, you also have a lot of work to do to catch up to this because now they're diversifying their portfolio, so to speak, so that all their eggs aren't in that exclusive basket. And the first time I'm seeing it is from this presentation. I'm like, whoa, okay. They are buttoning up every little thing that they can. And with that $1.5 billion investment in services, they could catch up real quick, real quick. So they're also going to grow first-party studios 
cloud and service strategy, VR, et cetera. By the way, they have 8.6 million monthly active users and 48 million, that's rounded up, PlayStation Plus users. So this is basically Sony's commanding lead over Xbox and the areas in where they are leading. So they are not leading with PlayStation now. That is one small thing. But everywhere else, including revenue, they are in the front. So Xbox, here's what I got to hear from you guys. What is your plan to compete with this? The Xbox hides their numbers. They don't talk about console sales because that becomes a story. And I, I, I understand the strategy. I think it's smart. That becomes a story about how bad they're doing, right? Oh, they only made $5 billion instead of $10 billion. <laughs> They're doomed. No, that's not just not how it is. <clears throat> this Sony story is very eye opening. And I encourage you to just go look at these slides. If you have any doubt about how well they're doing, go look at this and those doubts are put to bed. So Xbox, you got to have a good E3 this year. You just have to. Otherwise, for the next year, the story is going to be, oh, nothing's on Xbox, right? And I have faith that they're going to have a good year. And I do think that in a few years, things are going to look a lot clearer about how close these two companies are. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Sony's commanding lead is certainly shocking to the point that I'm just <laughs> flabbergasted. I don't even know what to say. It's very, very impressive stuff. Good presentation, Jim Ryan. <laughs> I like numbers. Mm -hmm. All right. So, hey, if you like this sort of content, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, yeah. Uh, I just remembered that in the Paul versus Destin episode that we recorded, Paul kills me, but I didn't have Paul record the outro. So now I have to figure out how to come back to life. Spoiler warning. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the members who support these sorts of videos. I appreciate all of you. I'm going to get out of here. Bye. I'll see you for the next one.